The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello, and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist, Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... The dramatic puddle that is Eric Velasquez. My pronouns are also he, him. <laughs> that, that, that puddle has got the most uh, screen time out of anyone, I think. <laughs> but you know what? We're joined. Wait, who's, who's that on the moors? <laughs> oh, no. It sounds like some people that are interested in werewolf stuff. My people. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do we have here? Who's going first? You or me? <laughs> you go first. Okay. <laughs> You're the brain. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm Alyssa, co-host of the Silver Scream podcast. And I'm Courtney, the other co-host of the Silver Scream. My pronouns are she, her. Oh, yes. Mine are also she, her. Well, glad to have you guys. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited to be yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. When we saw stuff coming out of that you guys were, were doing this, we were like, th- these are our kindred spirits. Yes. Like we're mm-hmm. Do it, you know, have this the same sort of vision. We were we were super excited. Yeah, I, I decided to call you guys brothers from another monster. <laughs> I love I like that. It. Yes. Because yeah, your show is really similar in concept to ours. <laughs> like first show I've been listening since you guys invited us. So I'm like, oh yeah, I feel this. This is it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't even stuff. remember how we found each other on Twitter. I was just like, I love Frankenstein. And then somehow. <laughs> oh, you do. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Me and my like 17 copies of Frankenstein. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I feel like we've maybe swapped places because I'm also the werewolf guy. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. On Twitter, there's a there's a vampire focused podcast, and so I'm like, I will become their friend. Okay, Universal so Monsters. here's the plan. All right, we all get together and we start the Universal Horror Podcast Network. Yes, yes. Okay, oh, Let's do it. Was, okay, so then we got to get I some. Also, uh, and I know somebody whose like favorite Universal movie is The Creature from the Black Lagoon. So there you go. Best. All right, <laughs> just see the invisible some invisible <laughs> man fans. They got to exist, you. right? Well, I don't know. We can't see him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> um, so I guess right away we should say I kind of played a trick on everybody because I so I, we're, we're talking about Frankenstein's bloody terror this week. And there ain't no damn Frankenstein in this. There's no Frankenstein no, in this movie. Nary a single Frankenstein. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, it's got Frankenstein <laughs> in the title, so we still had to cover it, right? Yeah. But. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, from what I can gather, this movie like was made in Spain and was originally called The Mark of the Wolf Man. Or La Marca uh, del Hombre Lobo. Yeah. And like I think at some point they were like trying to get it onto drive in double features and mm. wanted to pull a Frankenstein angle. So they're just like, we'll just give it that title, that'll work. And I think in America <laughs> it's more known by this title than it's more accurate title. <laughs> they did a big goof him up. I mean, <laughs> you just got to. Didn't tell <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and get this party started. Um, first off, we have a solid minute or two minutes of credits. So that's fun. <laughs> yes. And then we just get like cars and a ballroom, uh, like a, a masquerade, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there are no Which vampires. really like threw me off me because too. I was like, oh, is this a period piece? No. Yeah, the time period is very confusing in that first scene. When they cut to the castle, I noticed that silhouette of the car. And then I had to rewind. I'm like, wait, is this supposed to be in the shot? Because this is a masquerade ball scene. (laughs) Right. Like, I was like, oh, they goofed. Because this is like, this is clearly back in the 1700s. Hey, what are those two guys doing in the back with business suits on? Yeah, that that was, um, I was like, oh, is this an eyes wide shut party? Right. uh, Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Now that would have been a movie. <laughs> I mean, 
Listen, I'm sure it exists somewhere, right? <laughs> right. All right, so we get one guy who's named Professor, uh, Professor Sigmund, and his daughter Janice has just returned from, from Switzerland, from a Swiss school, and she's totally different from what she used to be. It doesn't matter because we don't know. We don't know what she used to be. <laughs> we'll never find out. Janice from Spain. <laughs> right? Janice. <laughs> right. Sigmund from Spain. Yes. <laughs> and he's talking to his friend, Judge Arno, who has uh, a son named Rudolph. And, like, these two dads, they just, like, basically just show up every now and then to kind of give us some plot points. They're kind of <laughs> the exposition dump guys, and they're they're not really important to the plot at all, really, ever. They, they kind of get more into the mix at the end, but... There's <laughs> one scene where they matter. <laughs> just one. Like, we're coming back. We, sh- we, we promise. We'll be back when it's a mat, but it's an important right, part. Right, exactly. <laughs> just, they pop in just to remind you that they're there. Mm-hmm. So, so I guess it's like, uh, what, Chekhov's dads? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they pretty much like they talk about their kids, and then the ca- like they just pass the camera off to the kids, and it's like uh, Rudolph and Janice are dancing, <laughs> and we kind of get to meet them. Mm-hmm. Rudolph's uh, going to be a lawyer, and then they get sort of or, there's like this this one weird scene that just interrupts of a dude in a sports car with like a weird yellow lighting kind of on him. He's just like he's jamming he's, out in that car though. He's like, yeah, he's like, I'm ready to go to this party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's listening to sight hazard possibly happening as well with that mask on. Right? <laughs> Just wearing your mask while driving your domino mask. I wrote down, oh, it's the Joker himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. And like everything about this guy, he's creepy as hell. Like it seems like he's supposed to be the villain. And then like a half hour in, you realize, oh, wait, no, we're supposed to like this guy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is he the Frankenstein? <laughs> Yeah, he he has the grumpiest face the entire movie. Right, it's hard to place age wise. Like he seems young, like the the teen girl, like not the teen girl. He seems young, like the daughter J- Janice, mm-hmm. but also seems old enough to have like an established estate with a maid and all this. Like, eighteen or fifty two. <laughs> eighteen or fifty two. Right. Ageless mystic, much like Keanu Reeves. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so, so he's dressed up as the the spirit of evil or the devil, mm-hmm. supposedly. I've never seen that yes. b- rendition, but it's interesting. It's it a was take. giving it, it was giving Mask of the Red Death. Mm, yep. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense, especially if this was a period piece. But it's not. But it is. <laughs> right? They're just rich people being weird. <laughs> I mean. Times have changed. <laughs> Rich people? Weird? Uh, Not in my society. Right. <laughs> and yeah, so then I think we, we go back to the party and he pretty much, like, we get this weird, you know, the weird scene of him in the car and then he immediately just is at the party. Mm-hmm. Well, he spikes the camera. Like, he's like, I'm doing something mischievous. And then he goes, dances with Janice. And tells her, I'm the spirit of evil, which is a normal thing to say to a woman you're She's into it, though. Right. She likes the spirit of evil. (laughs) Right? Diablo himself. (laughs) Diablo. (laughs) Up to this point, it felt like Janice and Rudolph kind of had a thing going, but she is quickly diverted to being into this new guy. Rudolph, old hotness. She seemed bothered. (laughs) From what I understand, they are like betrothed yeah. since childhood mm. well yeah so like, love it. Mm, the devil well yeah so yeah as i think actually professor sigmund actually mentions that weissman or arno is trying to marry in nobility with a son mm. so he's like ah, oh, you know we're gonna get married your kids married it'll be a great match blah 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 so yeah yeah so this is the the like forbidden temptation Mm, the devil. <laughs> right. This is so, mm, so the smart. Devil. This movie is so smart. <laughs> right. I wouldn't go that far now. <laughs> <laughs> and so then like the we just kind of like the party ends and we are it's like the next day and Janice tells her dad that she's gonna go see Frau Hildegard. Um, and then pretty much we're just there at Frau and Frau Hildegard's is like uh, an antique store, I guess. Sure. <laughs> it seems that way, right? Because I thought he was she was going to like a pers- like visit a friend or something, but no, it's like it's a store. She buys something while she's there. Right. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have this piece of China restored, or, or I'm going to buy stuff. 
and our uh, weird guy from the night before is there, and we finally get his name, and it's Valdemar Daninsky. Hell of a name. <laughs> yeah, that that's a name. Mm-hmm. Um, and seeing it in the subtitles every time, I was like, huh, that really is his name. <laughs> yep. They're going to keep going with that. In this Spanish movie. That- mm-hmm. <laughs> I do actually really like the way it sounds when they say it. Valdemar. Yeah. Valdemar. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and everybody, and everybody's wearing a turtle language. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, it's the late yeah. 60s, right? Everybody's got to have the turtleneck on. Oh, boy. They're, assuming, they're, they're surprisingly so modern right? <laughs> for their time. Yeah. yeah. What is this? What a man from Uncle? Right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> But no, I think this is actually supposed to be set in like Germany because isn't the town they're in like Duchenstadt or something like that? Mm. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's like Poland oh, right. or mm, okay. something like it's 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 definitely it's not the, Southern Europe. It's Central Europe, kind of yeah. maybe Black Forest kind Ish. of yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the really f- so like the actor playing Daninsky like this b- ends up being like his life's work. He is in like eight or nine movies playing Daninsky. Like that's that's what he's mostly known for is just playing this guy over and over again. I'm so hmm. proud of him. How did he do that? <laughs> this movie? Wait a second. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Well, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm some continuity errors here, Dom. No, just like Lon Chaney Jr. himself. That's but, right. Uh, fair uh, enough. Yeah. yeah. True. <laughs> he kind of comes in and it seems like he's a little it's a little stalkery he's kind of creeping on her a little bit and in fact she buys her thing and then walks across the street to the church and he follows her there and they get this awkward like hand touching while she's is that holy water is that what that's she's like, yeah that the yeah. baptismal what's the opposite of a meat cute because that's what this is <laughs> <laughs> i mean huh like, what? <laughs> like you met where <laughs> Yeah, he was creepily stalking me. It was so great. Yeah. This is a traditional werewolf (laughs) movie. Fair enough. Yeah. And like, in fact, they they touch hands and then like he steps back and she does like the crosses herself and everything. And he just like stares at her from the side of the frame while she's doing this. And it's it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. (laughs) Then we just kind of cut away to like later, and Janice and um, Rudolph are taking a drive together. And like at home, their dads are talking business, and I think it kind of cuts back and forth a little bit. And we get more pointless dad conversations. <laughs> I love me some pointless dad conversations. Also, like when they're getting in the car to leave, Daninsky is just there over Rip. in the corner, just watching them, just watching them from the church steps. Like, mm, what's going on? Menacingly. Yeah. It's, very, it's just it's so odd. <laughs> the things that were considered like romantic. I mean, I guess it still happens today, but boy, howdy. If <laughs> I found out that some dude was just standing off in a corner while I was with my friends, I would not be into that. It doesn't matter how well he dances at an oddly timed fast break. <laughs> right. It doesn't matter how many turtlenecks he has. I mean, yeah. He can have terrible. a turtleneck in every color of the rainbow and then some. <laughs> Including mustard, which is the one he rocks, I believe, at yeah. the end. Yeah. He goes <laughs> between red like, and mustard. And it's very fitted. Like, very, like My man's titties are just... <laughs> <laughs> and I could not <laughs> stop looking at them. Because, like, he's... No, I'm like... I, I was just like, why is his shirt so tight? That's He's kind of nice. got like that Shatner bob. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. stocky. <laughs> yeah, like his waist is actually somewhere above his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> his posture is like that, like bent forward. Yeah. It looks like, like cronk. Cronk. <laughs> yeah, <first> cronk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> So their drive ends up at this weird old house. As you um, do. Yeah, so they're going to like explore. They're doing like the urban exploration thing of this abandoned house, uh, which we find out is called Wolfstein Manor. Sickening. <laughs> like, that, that set up so many red flags. Like, I feel like this one movie somehow inspired so many video games. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then I was like, oh, they're, they're, they're going to talk about something that happened in Tibet. And I'm like, oh, that reminds me of um, not the Hollow Man. What was the other one where there was this like skeleton thing in uh, Tibet? 
Do you all know what I'm oh. talking about? It was on Shutter. Is that the Skeleton ritual? Brilliant? No. Um, it's going to bother Skeleton. me, and then you're going to... Because my brain keeps wanting... Because you said Tibet, and so I know I'm not right, but I keep thinking of the medium. Oh, um, the empty man? The empty man, thank you. Empty man, yeah. I googled skeleton Tibet movie. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing that popped up, but I loved that movie. Right. Loved it. And it's like, so this kind of has that vibe to it. So I wonder if yeah. they saw that. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, that's where my. I mean, it's based on a graphic novel, so maybe it was possibly inspired by whoever wrote the novel. There you go. Awesome. Which is a weird, which is a weird line to trace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. And yeah, so then of course, as they're trying to explore, guess who followed them? Uh, Daninsky pops in, and he's like, "Oh, I know all this, the lore about this house. Let me tell you all this, this secret stuff." He knows a lot about everything that he probably shouldn't know about. <laughs> this house has lore, you guys. Yeah, lore. I just where he learned it all, right? <laughs> the knowledge is stored in the turtleneck. That <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> It seems like like Rudolph keeps acting like like this is stuff that this is this is boring stuff that nobody cares about. But I think he's actually kind of creeped out. Like he's trying to act tough, but he's mm -hmm. a little uncomfortable knowing all this scary stuff about the house. Well, I think it's also a little bit of jealousy, right? Because like mm -hmm. Waldemar just kind of pops in, and Janice is like, "Boom, I'm on this guy." Yeah. Hey. No loyalty. <laughs> I do. I feel kind of bad for Rudolph because like you don't get a ton of backstory into him. But like, yeah. I can imagine it'd be kind of rough. Like you're like, I'm supposed to be developing a relationship with this girl because we're going to get married. Oh, but then here's this weird buff guy. Right. <laughs> and he wants me to chain him up. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're going to have a conversation about that. Because this is definitely yeah, a three way. Yeah. 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 I had to like, double check. I'm like, that's the same out. guy, right? <laughs> I guarantee there's no fan fiction for this movie. Yeah. Well, there it is now, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but I got an AO3 account and no one to stop me. Bang. Got it. Please, please do. I really want this to happen. Please. Yes. I, I'm in favor of this as well. Mm -hmm. My erotic Frankenstein's bloody terror fan fiction. <laughs> We can add the Frankenstein in. Right. Yeah. It'll be in the background. Yep. Rudolph is the Frankenstein. There you go. Why not? Why okay. Not? There is a spot where I thought there was going to be a Frankenstein. I'm very mad that it didn't happen, but. <laughs> but basically, the lore that he tells is that, like, the last person who lived in this house, uh, Imre Wolfstein, right. like, you, like you said, went to Tibet, got Wolf. cursed by the, the Black Star curse, and came back as a werewolf and terrorized the town before being impaled by a silver crucifix right yeah the family came the original uh Wolf wolfstein family came here about 100 years ago but 50 years ago emory was the last wolfstein which 50 years is is a long time but it's also not a long time to basically lose your entire family <laughs> yeah i mean they're from hungary too so I, are you saying they didn't have a lot to eat you know, because yes. they're hungry. <laughs> they starve. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, anyway, what happened 50 years ago? Yeah, in the 60s. <laughs> That's okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. You you're right. <laughs> they leave and. Then this is the part where Rudolph, like, at this, you know, like you were saying, you kind of feel for him, you're in favor of him, but then he's just kind of a dick and runs this yeah. carriage off the road. Right. Yeah. And these are our, you know, our Romani people because it's a werewolf movie and we've got to, got to have, have a, They got to yeah. put the G slur in there. That's what, that's in my notes. Yeah, I said, ah, yeah. oh, yes, the G slur. Yeah. 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 I was like 15 minutes in, we've made it. We <laughs> got made there, it. folks. Yep. And they, I wrote down, oh, two sexy travelers. But then they was, oh, oh never mind. I know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, we find out what, uh, the the male's name is uh, what? Jojo. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Gyo Gyo or Jojo, something like that. Right. His like bizarre adventure. O G Y O. <laughs> with with Nasha. It sounds right. like a Star Wars character. Right. <laughs> Because he says something like, oh, I'm going to be cursed now because I ran them off the road. And that's where we get the actual slur. Mm -hmm. um, but then Daninsky stops and is like, cool, like he helps them. This is where he like things kind of turn and I'm sort of more on his side than Rudolph's. Well, I was like, oh, this is a setup. He's luring him back to his evil castle and he's going to do some. No, he's just helping the people out. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. just nice. He didn't know. Yeah, he didn't know. 
that they were going to get into someone else's business that they shouldn't be getting into. Yeah. That's their fault at that point. I mean, it still feels like a bad call to be like, hey, listen, there's a lot of bad shit that happened to this house. You should go there. <laughs> <laughs> But I also understand the like. Well, no, he's gonna be there. Here's a safe yeah. place for you, friends. That's fair. Yeah, because they're like, it's just, it's storming. Do you know where anywhere we can like shelter? And he's like, yeah, there's an abandoned house right down the road. Nobody will bother you there. And they're like, oh, cool, thanks, Ken. Yeah, it seemed like a nice house yeah. to stay in if you weren't going to rummage through everything. <laughs> grave <laughs> rob. Yeah, that yeah. too. Grave robbing is for chumps. Yeah, yeah, or stereotype <laughs> Romani yeah. people, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so because like as soon as they get to the house, they're like, "Oh man, there's there's lots of stuff here," and the dude's like, I, "There's a graveyard out back. I bet we can steal some shit out of the, of the graves." <laughs> Literally, let's do some grave robbing. <laughs> oh, they have wine, and mm-hmm. the subtitles were like, "We'll have a wet dinner." <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it was like if that was actually the translation, or if it was like a liquid dinner, maybe or something. Like, we'll drink dinner. I don't know what it was, but it was we'll have a wet dinner. <laughs> yeah. And I'm never gonna not think about that if I <laughs> having wine with dinner. It's always oh, dinner. Dinner. Oh, oh, oh. Really, you know. And th- she had some bread that looked really good. Yeah, really crusty and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just sit by the fire with my bread and wine and mind my business. But these people ain't me, I guess. Yeah. And there was something about the way that she like she like tore the bread off and then like ate it like underhanded, and I was like, that's a really <laughs> interesting way to eat. And it's like, a technique. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to try that now and see how it, how it feels. <laughs> Bread eating pro strats from the Franken cast. And I like the way she screamed when she saw a candle shaped like a skull. Oh, yeah. And I was like, is, what is she screaming at? Then they showed, I'm like, really? That's what you're going to scream at? I and thought it was like, a shrunken head at first. Yeah, yeah. that's that would be like something a little grainy. Right, but, yeah. but no, but it's just a porcelain uh, skull with a candle, or porcelain candle holder, that's all. And, like, the sound mixing, when she screamed, it was just like, I'm going to pull these off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It couldn't be me, though, because if I opened a cabinet and saw a human skull inside, I would be excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably like, fuck yeah. Right. I'm going to close this and not touch anything Right, else. I'm right there I with you, I would die, I'd probably die in a horror movie because I'd be like, yeah, it's a skull. If somebody screamed at every skull shaped thing in my house, they would be out of breath very quickly. <laughs> Which I guess says something about me as well. You know. I love it. Candle, candle holders, a lot of skull shapes, like potted plant holders. Yeah. There's so many things you can yeah. get with skulls on them. Yeah. I have like various animal bones on my bookshelves. <laughs> Neat. Fair enough. Yeah. So anyway, Nasha and Jojo, Jojo, Gyogyo, uh, decide to get uh, hammered with all the wine they found in this cabinet. And uh, they're going to play, is this music diegetic or is this just really jaunty for no reason? (laughs) Yeah, I'm not, because we never see them like put music on, but it does feel different than the rest of the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. They are party animals. They are party animals. Yeah, they like dance around and stuff, but then like yeah, ultimately they uh, end up going down into this because he says I don't know if it's the subtitles or whatever, but he when he's talking he says something about a graveyard or a cemetery, but they end up in like mm-hmm. a crypt, right? Yeah, um, and of course they start opening up. Well, tombs. hey, hey, hey! First, we got to mention our first dramatic uh, puddle, <laughs> but just dramatic music <laughs> over a puddle. Why? <laughs> they use that shot quite a bit. They so many. <laughs> I like it. It's a good shot, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not we for don't, every scene. We don't know what to do with this transition. Have a puddle, <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Like I was like, oh, is there something in the puddle? Are we going to see somebody in the like reflection? No, that's too no. that's too high for this movie. Don't ask too much from the puddle. Right. <laughs> Damn it. But yeah, they open up this crypt and or this tomb and like there's a guy who is not decayed at all, looks perfectly healthy, except that he has a cross sticking out of his chest. Now, I'm going to ask you guys, uh, <laughs> this is multiple choice, so select the answer that's best, you know, suits you. Uh, one, you leave that shit the fuck alone. <laughs> Uh, two, you stare for a really long time and just contemplate what's going on. Three, you pull the shit out of that crucifix and you take it home. I'm yeah, gonna I'm gonna be a, a, I'm gonna be like a B and then an A because I'm gonna be like, okay. huh? 
Because I'm an inquisitive woman. Yeah. I'm a teacher. I like to, you know. But then I'd be like, I, nah. I don't think I like that. <laughs> Balloons to begin with. I'd be like, why would I do that? Right. What would I gain from this? <laughs> it looks, it's probably really, 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 really heavy too. So, yeah. well, nah. Nasha ain't about that shit. She's she's about that that money life. Mm-hmm. So uh, she steals like around and finds out. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if I was a grave robber and stealing stuff out of graves, if you open an old ass grave and there is a non decayed person in there, you got to get out of there. We leave that one the fuck alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and in in our exposition dads uh or no it wasn't exposition dads it was valdemar mm-hmm. let us know that because he wasn't killed by his true love he wasn't truly killed mm. <gasps> uh, that's a unique twist that i kind of thought was cool yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> on the werewolf not in our yeah. yeah not in our usual werewolf lore no it no. was very highly specific <laughs> Could be as it was bespoke lore for this movie. Right, right. Yeah. Our werewolves are different. Oh, <laughs> well, they also said the silver bullet to the heart. They mentioned that early right. on, too. And I think the heart placement also might have to go with that love theme. I would have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. so this might be an art house film, actually. That's what I say every time some movie makes some symbolism. <laughs> <laughs> it did a symbolism. It must be art. Or, oh, this could be a David Lynch film after all. A24, is that you? <laughs> David Eggers? Did you make this movie? There you go. Robert Eggers? Yeah, that guy. You know who I meant. Yeah. Yeah. I know people. Robert Eggies. (laughs) White guy. White guy, first name, last name, Eggers. (laughs) Why'd you spill your beans, Alyssa? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. You got me. I don't know why the lighthouse. I would love to do that for a podcast, even though it has nothing to do with werewolves oh, yeah. or anything like that. I just love that movie. It'll be Patreon exclusive. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Yeah, Emery. Uh, it turns out uh, when you remove the crucifix, he comes back to life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and like he turns into the werewolf inside the crypt where we can't see, so that they don't have to. <laughs> Do a transition scene. Right. And he just swipes at the air a couple times. Or his shadow does, sorry. Yeah, we get that good. He, like, he attacks Jojo in silhouette, like, so that we <laughs> can save a little bit of money on the makeup. Yes, and this <laughs> Exactly. We gotta, well, all right, we gotta cut out the blood uh, uh, in the budget, and we gotta cut out uh, the special effects a little bit. We've gone over. I wrote in my notes, did they ask him to move around like a seventh grader at a dance drink, <laughs> like, drink like three Mountain Dews? Because right. he's literally just flailing his arm. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a magical thing, really. And then it cuts to her, uh, and it cuts back to him doing that. <laughs> Yeah, I she's just it. standing against a, a brick wall completely by herself, screaming. It's fantastic. Jojo had so much time to get out. I mean, they both did. <laughs> <laughs> their deaths are nothing but their own fault. I would have just, like, pushed the lid back over right. him. <laughs> you good. <laughs> just stay. Just stay back in there, buddy. Whoops. <laughs> Sing a lullaby as you back away slowly. Right. <laughs> Uh, it's a wonderful thing. But yeah, so uh, then after that, to save on more money, we just get w- random wolf noises and shots of the like forest in the night. Wolf-like noises. Wolf-like noises. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it was just some guy going to... Ooh. Oh, absolutely. I wrote, I wrote down that the wolf noises were pretty interesting. <laughs> there were choices. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was some kind of animalistic noise. <laughs> oh. From the forest, it just cuts to like the next day, and we have like Daninsky's housekeeper talking about that there was an animal attack. Uh, and at first, like I thought, like oh wow, they've like you know they found them quickly, but no, there was a different animal attack because we don't care about the the Romani people that that died. These are right. our, our townsfolk that right. died. Joaquin and Raquel, right? Yeah. So they're they're upset and. It's going to be like they're going to the town's going to have like a search party kind of thing and like wander through the woods and try to like track the wolves down to prevent this from happening again. I wonder how that's going to work for them. (laughs) They have so many dogs, like 40 dogs. And I'm like, how can you see what is a wolf and what What is is a dog dog if you're looking for a wolf? Like (laughs) dog, smaller, wolf, big. Yeah, that's, that's so true. true. But there wolf are forty dogs. That's yeah. true. That's a lot of dogs. <laughs> like, 
I have, a, I, I have a feeling they probably didn't care if they hit the dogs there. I mean, That's they're true. like, like we're rich. We can just get a new dog. And, yeah. Oh. Right. Damn German aristocrats! Right, German, Spanish German aristocrats. These are <laughs> these are Habsburgs. Oh boy! <laughs> and they've got the jaws to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Daninsky is with them because you know he he wants to know what's going on. But like at this point, I still wonder like did he purposely send them to like start this going again? It was, it was very unclear, but. It, it kind of sh- like I think I think he like as we said before that this he had good intentions here and, and was upset with the way things played out. Right. Well, it even seemed like uh, whenever they're going on the hunt, he like swaps with a guy who's specifically going to that one location. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Rudolph is going there, and I'm like, oh, are we gonna have a setup here? Is he gonna re- eliminate a rival? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, I definitely got that vibe. And I, I think he was just like, oh, no, maybe something happened to them. I should go check on them, too, or something. But yeah, yeah at, the, at the time, I was definitely like, oh, he's planning something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, instead, as Rudolph and Daninsky head into the woods, a uh, wolf man like jumps out and attacks Rudolph and Daninsky saves him. Right. Surprise, he's a good guy. Yeah, I d- wouldn't have expected him to see him. Like, oh, right? Another one down. Competition eliminated. It's almost yeah. like you would think you'd sit there and like, Let, I want to see how this plays out real quick. <laughs> then I'll get yeah. involved. And yeah. almost like it's funny to me that just the, the wolf man is just a guy. Just a guy. He's <laughs> <laughs> just like, it almost just looks like a guy with like a lot of hair. Because mm-hmm. it's so dark, you don't even see like the details. So they just look like two dudes fighting. Like, in the- <laughs> I call those hypertrichosis. I was going to say hypertrichosis, yeah. Uh, yeah. Words. <laughs> it seems like anytime we've watched um, wolf werewolf movies from Spain or Mexico, that tends to be what their, their werewolves look like. Well, what's interesting about that is that is um, a very... There's a high... Um, not comorbidity. There's a high morbidity of hypertrichosis in Spanish speaking countries. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. There, there's a large population in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Like, huh. So there may be a tie there that, that that's where their Wolfman myths come from. Boy, I wonder how many atrocities happened in history due to that. Da, 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 da. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, that would be a cool angle for a, a werewolf story is a Mexican filmmaker's perspective on something like that. Right. That would be very cool. Like a modern day one would be kind yeah. of cool. We yeah. want to talk about desert werewolves at one point. Like, I remember Alyssa, like Alyssa, we talk about like Texas werewolves or like a southern werewolf. If like mm. a Mexican werewolf would be just like yes. perfect for that oh, be series so cool. we're inspired, <laughs> inspiring in our heads. <laughs> have you have you seen Howling 4? I'm just interested. Yeah, it's oh. not. No, I've only ever seen the very first one. And I'm excited to get to all of them. Specifically you should be. the one that's like. They're a treat. The marsupials. <laughs> yeah, tell me about the marsupials. <laughs> Yeah, there's a yeah. there's some wild ones in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, but uh, Voldemort jumps in with the save and uh, gives him the old crucifix through the heart mm-hmm. again. Again, yeah. Again. But he gets uh, he gets hurt in the process. He gets bit. Yeah, on the titty. <laughs> he is doomed. Oh no! W- Curse of the Black Star, and it he, like it's like a jigsaw thing, like how they cut the skin out, like the piece of jigsaw out of the skin, but it's like a star. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was pretty cool, I, I thought. Like, yeah, it was even though it's like a little bit of low budget makeup, it's still yeah. pretty cool. I thought. Yeah, yeah I thought because you know you always have like the, the, the like the mark of the pentagram thing, but I thought the way that mm-hmm. they play made it play out like really worked for this. Mm-hmm. It was gross mm-hmm. to think about just a cut like, section of your skin gone. Like, ooh. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, so he he knows what's up. Like he he knew all the lore, and so he's definitely like he kind of is starting to mourn his bad luck, and that you know his he's he doesn't have long. Like things are gonna go bad for him from from here on out. Yeah, and earlier he uh, had actually had a romantic rendezvous with Janice underneath a bridge uh, after they discussed yeah. uh, all the the mur- the new murders of Joaquin and Raquel. Not discussing the Romani murders at all, um, yeah. but yeah, and then he's like. Waldemar, Valdemar, uh, I almost said Vol- Waldemort. And he, <laughs> <That's so close. laughs> well, different kind of movie. <laughs> right. Tells Rudolph, hey, you know, 
you've you've got to keep uh, Janice up. No, he doesn't say keep her away yet. But yeah, Rudolph does. He's like, I'm gonna, I'll help you out. However, whatever you need, I'll I'll help because you yeah. saved me. But then he immediately goes to Janice and is like, you better stay away from him. <laughs> bad news. And it's like, he's right. But it also doesn't feel like that's like, that's not what, uh, what Voldemort wants at this point. Like right. you're not really helping him. You're helping yourself. I, don't know, I was like, why do the girls never go for the nice guys? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm such a nice guy. I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> I'm not a werewolf. <laughs> I'm a normal man. <laughs> But yeah, Janice doesn't listen and she goes to see Valdemar and declares her love. And yeah, she just declares her love and then it just like cuts to like that night. Rudolph what? Chaining. Hold, hold on. You're, you're skipping the dramatic puddles. We can't do that. <laughs> we, can't, <laughs> we get a kiss in a dramatic puddle. puddle. <laughs> no. Somehow I forgot to put all the puddles in my notes. I don't I know. <laughs> track of them. ADHD is a hell of a drug, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, so we get, you know, the, the normal thing. We got to, you know, Rudolph has to chain Daninsky up. Mm-hmm. So, but so he chains him up with like literally the most useless handcuffs <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> uh, they oh have paper. Right. They're just to get and your they're arms like, together, just, but you can open them pretty far still. Right. Why were they so long? Like Because... <laughs> They're not meant to actually hold it. Oh, okay. They're those kind of manacles. Gotcha. Yeah. If he had like wrapped them around a tree or something, right. then maybe. But no, I just two arms now closer <laughs> together than ever before. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. I like how he stands in the room with him too while he transforms. Yeah. He's just like, oh, just, it was incredibly yeah. homoerotic. The lighting was good. Okay, I like that a lot. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying Rudolph loves Voldemar. Wald- mm-hmm. Voldemar kind of likes Rudolph. Definitely loves Janice, and Janice only likes Voldemar. <laughs> oh, that makes so she's the to Rudolph. Yeah, exactly. So like, mm-hmm. it's technically meant to be though with him and Janice. So maybe they could make it work. So yeah. In a different time, they could have had purple. a perfect little polycule. It would have been. Yeah. 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 I think they should have just discovered the uh, Frankenfurter estate and then this would have been resolved. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. That is it. I mean, her name is so close. <laughs> Jan- Janice. Janice. <laughs> yeah. Valdemar. Janice. Valdemar. Janice. Rudolph. Oh. And his, when he when he turns into a werewolf here, like we do actually get the transition scene here, but it's a lot of cutaways, and mm-hmm. then like they do, um, they have like a blurry lens effect to kind of like sh- you know mm-hmm. hide the the cuts to save here. money. And but then like you all were saying with the romantic thing, like it looks like that you know the smudgy Vaseline lens that you get in like romances usually. Mm-hmm. It's so like, it, yeah, it kind of uh, leans into that. Um, I text Alyssa and I said, in his final form, he kind of looks like a gorilla. <laughs> and I said, in my notes, I said, not the gorilla suit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Voldemort is the buffest werewolf until we get Benicio del Toro in the Wolfman and like. Wow. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> he looks like he's doing a like a bad Sasquatch cosplay. Mm-hmm. The sound doesn't help either. No. Like, no. They're, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> did, he this little, did anybody notice his little dance? Yeah! I love that! <laughs> it's a little shimmy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jeez. It's amazing. But uh, then we cut to a, um, I guess his name is Otto. He's cleaning his rifle, talking about how great the hunt was the uh, the other day and how they killed those wolves. <laughs> he really saw nothing, but he's really proud of himself. And he's mm-hmm. talking to, they call her Gretton, but I think it's supposed to be Gretel. Okay. But anyway, and then all of a sudden, boom, werewolf through the door. <laughs> <laughs> he just beats the shit out of him. <laughs> like, fist swinging. Like, um, I mean, she has a cool line before he comes in, though. He says, she's like, oh, it would seem the devil walks free. Mm-hmm. When she hears the howling, he's like, I'm more concerned with the werewolves. Right. And I'm like, guess what, buddy? Same guy. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, bitch. <laughs> and then he starts it's, it's of, about him. Right. La- it was kind of laughable <laughs> what if werewolves fought with closed fists is uh, <laughs> and the then he throws him in the fire right oh, Jesus yeah. he's sadistic mm-hmm. 
But you could very clearly see that he was sitting behind a fire yeah. and not in one, and it was really funny. Like he did, wish they- he did a cheap like fire stunt where his leg was in the fire for a second, then after the pants got on fire, he took it out, he sat behind them. The sound dubbing is so bad. I wish they would have had like a ham punching sound. <laughs> 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 uh, I would if I had a time machine, I would go back to a 1960s Foley room. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what they yeah. did. Right. <laughs> the door opened at one point and it sounded crunchy. <laughs> 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 not, not a lot of fun sounds happening in this. This is a treat. For the it is a treat. Yeah. Okay, I usually watch movies on my television, but for this one, I watched it on my laptop, and I was like, "Oh yes, I'm getting the full." Dolby 4K surround sound. That's amazing. Uh, so That's anyway, so Walt, Walt, Walt Valdemar Wolf. Uh, Ain't got no time for sexism because he also beats the shit out of incredible as well. <laughs> yeah, he does. Equal opportunity. Right? Murdering. And then while she's unconscious, he he just smashes all the shit in their house too. <laughs> so now when she wakes up, she's got fuck a dead husband house. and no stuff. He said, fuck this house. Right, in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Bad behavior. And very bad, bad, bad framing mm-hmm. after this scene. It was like he was his legs were cut off, and it was such a far away shot. He was running back to the castle. I was like, "Who framed this?" Right. <laughs> I'm so mad. I don't know shit about filmmaking, so I'm just like, "Huh, well, Alyssa, if you saw a shot with a person running and they were only seeing <laughs> yeah, the great. Was great. I was having a great time." <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I digress. The it's the, I know sure. it's the I know something's wrong with this, but I don't know what it is. Filming is half the battle. Right. If you sense yeah, it's yeah. wrong, you've already got the filmmaker. Like in a you. bizarro it's, comic exactly. that we're yeah. movies. <laughs> It's like the next morning and Daninsky is talking to Rudolph and he's like, oops, sorry, I broke out of the handcuffs. I guess next time I you get better away, shoot me. Yeah. Just kill me. Right. Sorry. I, my bad. Uh, he went the Lon Chaney route, damn it. <laughs> yeah. He has some really cool art on his wall, too. Mm-hmm. There were some interesting like caricatures or something on the wall I was could not take my eyes off of during the scene where he was talking to Ralph. Or Rudolph. Ralph. Yeah, I wish his name was Ralph. <laughs> Ralph. Ralphie. Uh, we put the ray fines in your in your head. <laughs> His housekeeper is Magda. Mm-hmm. She's stunning. And she looks so dramatic in her robe and she's like, What's going on? And he's like, You must leave. I left you lots of money on what in the room. And she's just kind of oh, like, right. very dramatic. I love it. This is almost telenovela shit right here. You know? yeah. mm-hmm. The robe. This, like, she's had her hair stunned, like She's gorgeous. I'm like that. Everyone, all the women in this movie are gorgeous, and yes. Jan- Jan- Janice has amazing hair. Oh, I, yeah. I, was, I want my hair that long. <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> Anywho, fair enough. But here's my question. So yeah, so basically, Rudolph's like, yeah, Voldemort left you uh, a shit ton of money. Go home. The idea is he's not coming back. I mean, Squatter's rights, you know. <laughs> yeah. What's stopping? Mm-hmm. Right. It's a nice house. You'd think they would just be like, hey, can you watch the house while we're gone? Because <laughs> they say they're going away on a trip, but then they're just, you know, they're just going. We're never coming back. We're, we're eloping. <laughs> That's what Rudolph was saying in his head. We're eloping. Yeah. This is, we're gonna it was that. at this point in time when I realized there has not been one single Frankenstein in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, where's the Frankenstein at? And I waited, and I waited. <laughs> And I waited. <laughs> and it never happened. It never came. <laughs> yeah. They're going to the Wolfstein house to hide out. Mm-hmm. But on the way, Rudolph stops and tells Janice that the Daninsky's leaving as well. Uh, and she's like, but you know, he's my love. And he's like, you're just a girl. You'll move on. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's, that's pretty yeah, condescending. Girl. Get over it, girl. Your life is perfect because you're a girl. <laughs> that's what I've got from that. <laughs> And that's why she's not into Rudolph. Right. <laughs> but anyway, he, she's like, well, okay, let, let me go with you. And Rudolph is, of course, like, no, I'm just going to hop in my VW bug and get the fuck out of here. 
not not expecting her to just follow him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which people are so easily followed in this movie. Because like. <laughs> they're too rich to care That's about right. their security. They're aristocracy. Damn. Cut to, or we're like following her, or with her now, you know, mm-hmm. once she's following them. So she shows up at the house and is like wandering around trying to find them. And she ends up like in this basement dungeon. And then Rudolph pops out from behind a coffin? What, what was, like, it wasn't a passage. It was just a little hole. Like, what was he doing in there? Sneaking. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, it was just a jump scare. I don't think there was any... It was just for our benefit as yeah. the audience. The yeah. coffin and just pops out. Um, oh, yeah. And then doesn't she find her way into a uh, coffin that has a skeleton in it? Like, just walk, like creeping sideways when it's clearly there's a coffin right beside you. You just have to yeah. turn your head. Did she have a, a injury while she, on the way here that prevented her from turning her head? <laughs> right. The script needed her to yeah, be pretty able much. To turn your head. Yeah. Of course, now that Janice is there, they're like, okay, we'll tell you what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, Daninsky's a werewolf. We're trying to get all that straightened out and keep him safe and keep people safe from him and all that. Uh, and it turns out their love is going to be stronger than life or death. Beautiful. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, every time that there's like a, were- a romance in a werewolf movie, it's not going to end well. Mm-hmm. Mm, no, probably not. <laughs> right. And uh, because Vol- Valdemar is uh, the exposition wolf, uh, we also learn that this uh, this castle was owned by satanic monks in the 15th century. <laughs> Satanic monks. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> Very metal. Yeah. That's pretty sick, yeah. And the 1500s? Like, mm-hmm. all right. Yeah. That, that added age makes them spookier. <laughs> right. He's like, when were the Crusades? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> The 1300s. Oh, so never mind. <laughs> That's the thing where they like they're protecting from they're protected from them. I guess yeah. they're satanic. But. We end up with a we get a little side scene with the the dads and some other town elders discussing that there's been some new murders. Uh, so presumably this is what you know Valdemar got up to last night, and then we just are back with our sort of trio that's trying to figure things out. And Daninsky is like very defeated. He's like uh, you know. A, I think you all are going to just have to kill me. I don't know that there's any other solution. And then Janice finds a letter from a doctor who was trying to help Wolfstein. And this is where I was like, this is the Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> that would have yep. been so good. It would have been, been so good. <laughs> This movie really plays with your expectations. <laughs> yeah. Turns out uh, this uh, Emery Wolfstein was a friend to Yanos Mikolov, who was a doctor who was trying to help him find a cure. Before a, hey, what's this This other Deninsky? What's this talk? What's this talk about this other Deninsky here? Yeah. Does, that doesn't really go anywhere, does it? Like, Well, it's, nope. it, was, it was our Deninsky's dad. That, that's where that went. That's it. He was just, like, excited that his dad showed up in the letter. Right? <laughs> oh, cameo. Right? My father made a cameo in my own story. <laughs> That's so sad. I'm sorry that I said that. Um, and, yeah, so th- they're like, okay, this might be hope. If we can find this doctor, maybe he can save Daninsky. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. But, of course, I mean, Mikolov's probably dead by now. It's It's been uh, 50 years. Mm-hmm. You know? A lot can happen in 50 years. A lot can based happen. on the other family lineage. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but before they can really kind of get involved with that, it's it's nighttime, so it's time for... Dramatic uh, Puddle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's time for dramatic puzzle, of course. Uh, it's also time for Daninsky to turn into a werewolf again. Oh no! Um, completely off camera. <laughs> they they paid for their one transition scene. That's all we're getting. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, blah, blah, blah. Get that gorilla suit back on, buddy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 
But the bars seem to work. He doesn't escape tonight. It's just he's stuck behind bars for a little while. And then it's just like the next morning, they got a letter from the doctor, but it's his son, right? It's uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Mikolov's son. Or so you say. Yeah, so, so weirdly named Yanos Mikolov again. Yanos Mikolov the second, I guess. Junior. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's, he's coming to help. And so he arrives with, and they arrive and it's like this giant, like billowing cloud of smoke. And like, I thought it was supposed to be that they were on a train, but then like, as you know, as we'll find here in a little bit, maybe not, maybe right. this is just best shot of the movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Those two coming up. Well, it's a dramatic shot. It's like, that's actually a pretty cool <laughs> shot like is where the, the fog yeah. billows out. And then it's just Wandessa, which hell of a name, Wandessa. Wandessa. She got the buckle fat removal surgery. <laughs> Her cheeks were like. Right. <laughs> um, in my notes, I said, oh, these people are clearly evil. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everything was sharp about them. Their eye lo- their eyebrows. Uh, I think Yanos's ears were pointy. Like he had almost elf ears. Yeah, they were they weren't they trying were. to be sneaky about this at all. Like no. you know what's up with them. Also, right away. they had a giant fucking box, a man sized box. And that's what got me the worst. <laughs> like that could fit a Frankenstein. That, there he is. He's in there. Right? No, and he wasn't. <laughs> every at every turn, disappointed. Ah, uh, that's rough. In the lack of Frankensteins. <laughs> So they arrive at the at the uh, monastery. He's like, I'm the son of the original, but I got all his notes. So I, I, I know everything he learned. I've inherited all my father's science. <laughs> all his science. <laughs> all his science was inherited. <laughs> right. It's genetic science. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Not no, no, no. We're cutting that out. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Yeah, and I wrote um, here, my vampire sense is tingling pretty hard. Oh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> the most angular looking face as possible. Yeah. What could they mean? Right. Daninsky's like, oh, it's great that you arrived because last night was my last full moon night. So I'm good for like 28 days or so. I can help you out. We'll get everything figured out before next time I'm going to have to wolf out. And they're like, nah, we work alone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not sketchy. Trustable. Mm hmm. So they say they work alone, but then we just immediately cut to Daninsky chained to a wall while they do weird satanic ritual stuff. Dramatic puddle, then <laughs> pentagram. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, they're doing like a satanic mass just with the two of them, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I guess they must have at some point been connected to this in the 1500s. Is that what we're supposed to gather from this? Mm-hmm. I'd say that's safe to say. <laughs> Family tradition and all that. Yeah. Right. So they kind of, you know, do their thing. And then we just cut to like later on upstairs and they're discussing their progress with uh, Rudolph. And they're just like, yep, things are going along well. It's like, did you not hear what was going on in the basement? Don't worry about it. <laughs> this man just ignoring all this shit. It's out of his league. He doesn't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They say like they have to work only at nights um, because due to the nature of their work, they're going to sleep during the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and like how is, no one's like they're vampires. Hmm. No, no one's catching on to this. Right. Yeah. In a world where werewolves exist. I mean, it's not that far fetched. <laughs> right. like, hmm, you only work at night. Your faces are super pointy. Yeah. <laughs> In my world, only one type of supernatural creature can exist at a time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if I ever came across a single, any kind of monster, I'd be like, all right, so what else is... Th- we gotta go through the whole checklist now. We might as well all be real. I saw yeah. a Bigfoot, so is Chupacabra real? What's going on here? Is Loch Ness Monster? Exactly. We gotta find out. There's an invisible man in the scene right now. You just Yeah, see he's him. been here the whole time. <laughs> the puddle has the gill man. Oh. That's, that's what the significance that's is. That's why they keep showing it. Got Perfect. It. We got there. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess, like, you know, because they're vampires and they got to get control of the house, we get the lady vampire seducing Robert. Or, uh, Rob. Robert. We're, why are we just all over the place with this guy's name? He's, they they seduce Rudolph. <laughs> Um, clearly just to kind of just keep him off their trail, basically. And just because that's what vampires do, right? They got to yeah, seduce, seduce people. Vampires be seducing. <laughs> and then we get another scene with the dads that does nothing. Like they're just like, "Where's Janice? I, I don't know." What's right. The whole town has is dark, and everyone's sad now for some reason. 
It's not like there's a bunch of wolf attacks happening. And then we get the doctor waking up Rudolph asleep in a chair. And it's like, there's this bit where you're kind of left to wonder, like, did that seduction happen? Did he dream this? Did he fall asleep in the chair and just had a had a sexy dream about the lady? Or Listen, she was in full I dream of Jeannie gear. <laughs> yeah, she was. Yeah. Yeah, wispy out. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, he seems really confused, but they're like, okay, tonight we're going to need Janice to join us for our work. So she's going to have to be downstairs with us. Right. And then they're like, hey, maybe you ought to, maybe you ought to stick to night times too from now on. <laughs> right. Just a thought. Mm-hmm. So then it's like Rudolph leads Janice down into the dungeon and we get like, they they heteronormatively split up into separate seduction couples. <laughs> yep. the, the lady vampire with the boy and the right. lady vampire with the lady. Yeah. Just another missed opportunity for me. No. <laughs> like later on, this is finally when the dads, I guess, get in the mix. So mm-hmm. suddenly Janice just shows up back at home and her dad is like, where have you been, you harlot? Uh, which is a great thing to say to your daughter. Jesus. <laughs> Why does she got to touch out his shirt the whole time he's talking to <laughs> Daddy! Oh Daddy. no. Oh no. <laughs> and she's like definitely in like a weird trance and he doesn't seem to realize at all. Like he's just yelling at her while she's staring off in the distance, not looking at him and just walking right past him. Well, she's been out with boys and smoking jazz cigarettes. <laughs> no, not the devil's lettuce. Uh, yeah, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> uh, which then, then we just cut back to the vampires are now, um, they've got Janice again. She's back. So I guess she went home for whatever reason. Yeah. And her trance. Yeah. And also called out to her and he shows up in full Dracula. Like he doesn't go half Dracula. It's full Dracula. (laughs) Cape and everything. If there were any doubts. Yeah. Right. This is Mike. This is me holding up my cape. Right. (laughs) Any doubts before that these people were a Shouldn't be there anymore. Yeah, so they lead Robert and Janice downstairs, and we've got both of the wolf boys now chained up. <laughs> they're both alive and well, kind of. And they're going, rrr, rrr, right. rrr, 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 and the dubbing is just making it the loudest noise in the in the whole scene. <laughs> yeah, Wolfstein is definitely like pissed that he's been woken up again. Like he's not happy about this situation. Well, he calls Sometimes you guys gonna kill me. Right. Well, he's like he calls Mikolov a damn demon. He's like, this was a setup, you know. It's possible that Mikolov betrayed him in the past. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Sequel. Hmm? Prequel. Prequel? <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the prequel we all wanted, but no one was saying. Yes. And so, yeah, at that point, the dads are finally like, we're going to get involved. We need to find our missing kids and take the law into our own hands. Yeah. Vigilante justice is always a good idea in these kind of situations, right? Right. Solves everything. <laughs> But hey, at least the dads found silver bullets that were just sitting on uh, Janice's nightstand. <laughs> <laughs> I think did did Voldemort give her those earlier, like yeah. when he thought they were gonna? But yeah, and they've been completely like clueless. But as soon as they see the silver bullets, they're like, "Oh, okay, we know what's going on now. We right. we, we solved the case." Has to be werewolves. Jump right I mean, in. It would work. For, it, it would work on non werewolf things too. Yeah. <laughs> Silver bullet to bullet. Bullet to yeah. bullet, that's right. It would be so much better if the, like, that was like the witch test. Like, we shot you with a silver bullet and you were like, humans are immune to silver bullets. Right. Yeah. Well, that's like the Monty Python skit. If you die, we'll send a, we'll send a letter to your family saying we're sorry, but uh, if you live, we know you're a witch. We'll burn you. <laughs> uh, and so then back at the, the weird dungeon, the, uh, the wolf boys turn into wolves and break free. Um, and they just can I say it? Each other. Can I say it? Can I say it? Yeah, we have a wolf fight. Wolf fight. There was a wolf fight. <laughs> just two guys in Sasquatch get up I, punching each other. <laughs> yeah, but I feel bad for Emery because he just got the snot beat out of him the whole time. He's not holding his own at all. I mean, I, he's been asleep for fifty years. You can't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> And the noise, like, 
rooms again? The 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 the, the folly room is that what you're folly yeah, room? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with like foley art lately, but <laughs> it's just, it's just who I am. <laughs> this movie's right. a grand feast of it. It is for sure. True enough. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Then at that point, the um, dads finally arrive at the house. Welcome to the plot, Dad. <laughs> like, right. Nice to see you. Hey, B plot. After like an hour and ten minutes. Well, this this is yeah. So the dummy the dummy of Emery gets his throat bit out. <laughs> Poor guy. Then the dads are. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. That happens first. So like, yeah, the the fight ends with uh, with Daninsky winning. The whole time the fight's going on, also the vampires are just standing there watching. <laughs> Plus, like, tranced out Rudolph and Janice are just frozen. It's nice to have an audience. Like, right. Yeah, they're, they're unbothered by it. Yeah. Right. This is what we wanted to happen. Do you think uh, Janos and, uh, like, Wandessa were like, like I got 50 on uh, Val- uh, Valdemar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So when when the dads do show up, yeah, they're like, uh, you know, everything's over. Uh, Daninsky is locked up and he's like, there's some vampires here. We got to the the werewolf situation is under control for the moment, but we got to find the vampires. They've got Janice. And also we got a really short window of time because I'm a werewolf. And when it gets dark again, I'm going to turn into a werewolf and I'll kill you. So uh, (laughs) it's like basically you got till sundown, then everything's fucked. Yeah. (laughs) All right. We're at where's we got steaks. We got steaks, yeah. guys. Okay. Yeah. Mm, delicious. <laughs> yeah. So at that, they're like searching around. Daninsky ends up finding Robert pretty quickly. Uh, Rudolph. Robert, Rudolph. Rudolph. <laughs> whatever his name is. This poor man has had so many names. This Ralph. Name. <laughs> Ralphie. Ralph. Rudolph. Robert. This is what I get for just writing R in my notes the whole time to save save uh, save time. So Daninsky finds him with. What's her name? Wandessa. Uh, Wandessa in her coffin. Mm-hmm. And so they're able to stake her because it's still daylight. She can't do anything. That like, is very anticlimactic. Like they just stake it her. Was. And, like, <laughs> and she goes, eh! And then also like, did you guys notice the like hyena noise that it makes when they turn into skeletons? It makes this like, ah! and then, like every time. <laughs> I put it in my notes because I, I thought it was so funny. Mm-hmm. I said, the hyena noises when their bodies turn into skeletons is so good. I think I just wrote down that sound. I also oh, forgot that. to comment. I also forgot to comment on Wandessa's beehive hairdo. Right. Um, it was very important to me. Beehive <laughs> for the gods. It was cool. It was the best supporting actress, Wandessa's beehive. beehive hair. <laughs> yeah. Best supporting actress. Love it. Love it. Yeah, so then they're like, all right, you know, we, we beat our the sub-boss. Now we've got to go find the main boss. No respect for one death. <laughs> <laughs> right. She was easy yeah. to kill. Things are starting to get dark, so it's like, uh, you know, we, like our stakes are ratcheting up. we got to find Janice before the moon comes out. They do. They find her right as it gets dark, and then Daninsky turns into a werewolf again. So now we've got the vampire and the werewolf. Uh-oh. Another, we got another showdown. Fight! Well, Twilight that, Breaking Dawn Part Two. <laughs> right. Well, th- that's uh, that's until uh, Yanos basically wakes up and uh, does like a dramatic like stage magician maneuver over Janice, and then Naruto runs off the thing, right, flapping his cape the whole way. Yeah, I bet he twirls away in his fabulous cape as he should. And they like dance away. It's yeah. very very lovely. <laughs> Artsy. Bear, I wrote very art- artsy. So, yep, there we go. <laughs> so, of course, Daninsky gives chase, uh, follows after them, and they end up in like the forest, and we get like fog. And, you know, this is where we got to have the final showdown, right? Mm-hmm. A nice foggy black forest. But the fight is like kind of like it gets kind of cut short mm-hmm. because. The sun just comes out. <laughs> right. But like, you don't even really see it. It's just, he just suddenly bursts into flame. Yeah, I was thinking that he was actually I didn't catch it. Yeah, I thought he was fighting Voldemort, and then all of a sudden just caught on fire, and she just couldn't see Voldemort. <laughs> no, Either it's way, just sunlight. I'm, it works. I guess. Yeah. It works for this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Fair enough. And apparently werewolf and vampire timetables don't exactly line up, so... No. The sun's out enough to kill the vampire, but the werewolf is still a wolf. A werewolf, yeah. Yes. So now it's like, oh no, he's going to get Janice. Yeah, but she's a stone cold G. She's like, dad, (laughs) let me shoot him. (laughs) 
<laughs> Let me cap the man I love. Because we know from before yeah. they have to be killed by their true love. Yeah. They'll live in a coffin all mad the rest of the right? time. Yeah. So yeah, I wrote Janus shoots him so many times. So many gratuitous <laughs> amounts. Lights of his ass up. <laughs> Over. And then she lays next to him and cries. Right. R.I.P. So she's just like right. crying, and Rudolph comes over and like comforts her, like pats her on the back. And then they all kind of start walking, walking away on. into the forest as we see a now human Beninsky laying there dead. Right. I was going to say his name's Valdemar Earl uh, Dzinsky. <laughs> Mm, Earl had to die. Uh, yeah. Earl <gasps> had to die. <laughs> yeah. Aww. He didn't have no black eyed piece though. He just got <laughs> shot. <laughs> <for that. laughs> he got the Glock eyed piece. Oh. Hey. If that means anything. <laughs> yeah, Sweet guess. taste of this nine millimeter. <laughs> but yep, that's the that's the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Help, did we not get any more puddles? Mm-hmm. No more puddles. <laughs> no more no. puddles. Not even a puddles. Are all one. dried up. No, nope. they're only on underneath on our cheeks now. Those are the only puddles we have. <laughs> Weeping for lost Valdemar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But he'll be back in several right. puddles, apparently. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. So, although, so we're actually. I, I, I'll say the the next actual movie that exists which is a thing I have to say, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, but the uh, the next sequel that actually exists is what we're going to talk about next week, which is actually does have a Frankenstein and is called oh, no. Assignment Terror. Mm. Um, but in between that, there is a movie, the, the, the first sequel to this series, that uh, Paul Nashi, the guy who plays uh, Daninsky, says was made, but no one else has ever seen it. And there's been no evidence. No, he, the actors he said that were in it, they don't seem to exist. There's no other credits for them. And but like it's listed as a lost film because he swears so much that it existed. But no one knows why. Why would you make up a, a movie? <laughs> like that's wild. Yep. <laughs> it like it has its own so Wikipedia page real. and it doesn't exist. It's the weirdest that's thing. Cr- it's like that. What's that? What's that fake movie? Goncharov. Yeah, Goncharov. <laughs> Martin Scorsese's Goncharov. That's how much, it was just inspired because somebody bought a shoe that was a real bad bootleg and it had like a fake Martin Scorsese movie on the tongue of the shoe. <laughs> Martin Scorsese's Goncharov. Um, who's in it? That there's like a, a the cast of it was like actual. Yeah, they who, like it, it's it's got it's so widely talked about that i yeah. thought it was real for a second if you google it it shows like the wikipedia page and it says cast like it's an actual cast like uh Sybil shepherd robert de niro al pacino <laughs> gene hackman it sounds like this is this guy's goncharov nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best thing about that goncharov thing was that like scorsese's daughter saw it and like texted him about it and he was like she was like do you know about this and he was like yeah i remember i made that movie oh, oh, no. excellent marty <laughs> He's a Gen Z dad who gets it. Like right. he's, he's with it. He's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of Paul Nashi, did you know he, there's apparently a series called the Voldemort Legacy? Oh, that's awesome! That's <laughs> so cool. And they're, they're pretty recent. They're like 2010 and. Uh, oh, that's what? awesome! Yeah. That's uh, how old is Paul? Is he still alive? I mean, that wasn't that long ago, so he's probably still alive. Oh, he he did a movie he in 2021, so he's. Oh yeah. Whoa. He doesn't look super. Like, he looks like um, one of those guys from an old movie that could be like sixty or could be thirty. <laughs> he's, he's old man. He's old man handsome. Old man handsome. He's like here. that handsome grandpa. Oh, he wait. The guy who played him, Paul Nashi, mm-hmm. or no? Yeah. It, sa- it says he's dead since two thousand nine. What? On his IMDb. It does. It? Oh, yeah, it does. But maybe it was archival footage or something. Maybe. It's a credit. I bet it yes. took that long to come out. <laughs> he is in... Uh, a- posthumously released products. Right. There oh, are... Okay. Yeah, there are a bunch of different things that were... Because yeah. mm-hmm. you're right, there is a 2021 movie that came out with him in it, so that's a long time to not premiere a movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> 2009 and 2021. That's one of those movies where they're just like, just release the fucking thing. <laughs> right. Get it out the door. 
AKA Dracula versus Frankenstein. Wow. <laughs> Walpurgis Night. Oh boy, I want to watch all of these movies. I need to add. We well now we have to add all of them to our list. We we have to have a watch is, party. Yeah, it's a Paul Nashithon. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, if you oh. if you cover one of these over on your show, we'll have to we'll have mm-hmm. to join in. Oh, for that. Yes. sure. That's a great idea. Keep this legacy going because <laughs> yeah, like. I think this movie was so hilarious because as soon as I realized there actually wasn't a Frankenstein yeah. movie, I was like, it makes sense why we were asked to come up for this movie. <laughs> That's- God, I waited for so long. <laughs> right. And like, I really wasn't even waited. mad about it. I was just kind of no. like, oh, there's not a Frankenstein in here? It's like I guess. It's a werewolf movie. Right. That, that yeah. I feel like besides the title. <laughs> for the 1960s, it's, it wasn't like would I say this is a good movie? Maybe not. But for like the 1960s, it wasn't a very bad werewolf movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the story no. is a story. The story hits the lo- like a lot of the beats you expect. And mm-hmm. I mean, besides the horrible, horrible sound mixing and dubbing, it wasn't so. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> no. Yeah, like it was. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> but it was still like. <laughs> A lot of it was just like, all right, right. The sound, <laughs> okay. The sound reminded me of Manos, the Hands of Fate. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've only ever seen that movie through the Mystery Science Theater I think version of it, and that's the only way I think I could watch it because I, it's horrible. <laughs> when I was in college, my freshman year of college, I had a crush on this guy, and I joined Star Wars Club. Oh. so I could hang out with them and they'd already like long since watched all the Star Wars movies so then they just watched like it was basically it, it was weekly riff tracks or mystery science theater like we would just like watch right. movies and rag on them and so he had mentioned uh, Man of the Hands of Fate and I had never heard of it because this was kind of in like baby baby horror like I was I've always loved horror but I wasn't like deep mm-hmm. yeah um, so yeah. he came to my dorm room and we sat and watched it on my laptop sitting next together and I waited for him to hold my hand and he never did but then the hand of fate, the <laughs> the hand was of no fate. Hand of fate. but well but then we went on we ended up going on a date and he made me watch Birdemic well <laughs> Oh. And that's how that ended, huh? You put in so much work for this person. Yeah, no, I went on one more date. Oh, okay. I went on one more date. Um, you went to too? No, we went to, to eat, we ate chicken fried steaks. It was great. <laughs> and then I went and got no. drunk at a party and was like, I don't think I want to go on a date with this guy anymore. <laughs> you made me watch so many bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> you made me watch Portlandia for three hours. <laughs> I, that's just funny. I liked that show, but I understand like when a guy watches a show that he wants you to watch, it makes it unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had an ex who was like obsessed with comedy Bang Bang, and I have nothing against it, but I can't fucking stand that show. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's not even just like a gendered thing. It's like a if somebody, yeah, it could anybody can ruin it. Right. Yeah. yeah. If, if someone's too yeah. overexcited and you're just like, it's fine. And if you've never heard of it before and you have no other preconceived ideas about it, you might attach that person to that mm-hmm. property, which is kind of what happened. But yeah, I mean, see, and I feel like I'm like that. Like The Exorcist is my favorite horror movie, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I watched mm-hmm. it with a friend, and I just kept looking at her. <laughs> oh yeah. And then she started to fall asleep, and I was like, "Wait, the fuck!" Up, <laughs> I will you. They haven't exercised the demons yet. <laughs> it's like that meme of um, it's, it's from that movie. Um, with Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal where yeah. it was, it's the unbearable weight of massive talent and mm-hmm. that meme of like it shows Nicolas Cage like looking like right. it shows Pedro Pascal he's like hey. so happy <laughs> and the caption was like me making my friends watch horror movies yes because I'm having a great time well my mm-hmm. poor roommate is does not horror at all yeah, but she's she's seen like she's come through the living room while I've been watching some of like the older like really bad horror like werewolf movies mm-hmm. from podcasts, and she's like, "Oh, I can do this. Like, this is fine." <laughs> you sent me the funniest picture of her reaction to a scene <laughs> in uh, "My Mom's a Werewolf." Oh lord! <laughs> oh, it's bad. It's so bad. It's probably it's, it's like one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. And- and the, if you thought the sound mixing on this movie was bad, oh no. 1987's the, My Mom's a Werewolf. 
There is a werewolf worse. fight, though, in that one, too. And the there werewolves is. are like, woo! <laughs> woo! The entire time, that's what they sound like. What was it that they were reacting to? I can't remember. Um, the dentist, the dentist scene. Oh, where, like, the yeah. dentist is drilling your teeth, like a, but it's erotic very dentistry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of reminded just, me of. It, yeah, it was trying to be Little Shop of Horrors, but like g- grodier. <laughs> <laughs> And it worked. And so I boyfriend. just sent her a picture of my roommate and her boyfriend standing there with like their hands on their so mouths. They just, like, they, just, <laughs> they just walked, happened to walk into the living room during this I time. Was but so I was genuine. just sitting there like, hey. <laughs> and that guy, the doctor, like the dentist character, had gloves on with like big rings over each. Oh, no. <laughs> and bad teeth. <laughs> and he was like kind of a. Um, he kind of had like that Latin lover stereotype thing going on. Mm-hmm, okay. So it was, it was, that movie was, um, honestly, I will say a fantastic title sequence. Okay. <laughs> I love yeah, the title sequence. Did. I'm a hundred percent sure a different company did it than the actual movie. Cause I actually was they really outsourced. like the quality. Like, I, most of the time they do actually, it's a different department, yeah. but, um, oh, cool. it was just like the drop in quality from the title sequence to the actual movie. I was like, what the hell? I have a theory. A- Wes Craven has seen this movie though. Hmm. There's a part, there's a part where a guy's like, he starts licking her hand, which like, is gross. But like, yeah, like instead of kissing her hand, he starts licking it because he's a werewolf. Oh, and by the way, it's oh god, I can't remember the actor's name, but it's the guy who played Nancy's dad in Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, uh, John Saxon. John Saxon, it's him. Yeah, and, and the sound effect is like a slurp. It's like he's like licking her hand. Is and it's really bad. <laughs> and he does it like four times. Oh no! And we're seeing it from across the restaurant, but still that loud slurp. It's so gross. <laughs> you should watch that movie for your podcast, even though it has nothing to do. With it. <laughs> you should just watch it and then talk to us about this it. Feel like we've it. already rec- we've already recorded it, oh. but just talk to us anyway. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Send that me your last week. Yeah, and like, watch there's, it. well, there's a character like the main girl's best friend who's like obnoxiously annoying, obsessed with horror movies the whole time, and I just feel like she'll probably mention Frankenstein at some point. You know, <laughs> I'm sure it'll connect somehow. Right. <laughs> it had a very soap opera energy, but well, I don't know why we brought that movie up. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we can talk for hours about <laughs> werewolf movies. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you kind of do, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So far, I'd we have. This, this is probably the talk. perfect time to, to uh, give you guys the floor and let you uh, promote oh. what you guys are up to. Awesome. Thank you. We should yeah. promote ourselves. <laughs> Um, we are, I can't remember what's coming up next. I have a uh, up. Underworld. So by the time this comes out, um, our, this next episode comes out on Wednesday. Oh yeah. Um, Underworld. so our friend, um, our, my good friend, Caitlin from plug it up, uh, she and frequent guest and they are co-hosting a twilight podcast, a skin of a killer podcast. <laughs> um, they guested for underworld because Caitlin and I both have seen and love underworld. Courtney and Mary had not seen it. No, it was, okay. it was pretty fun though. Yeah. But yeah, we, every week we watch a different werewolf movie, either we pick it out like a recommendation or we let the number generator pick it for <laughs> us. Which is how we got right. to watch My Mom's a Werewolf. <laughs> yeah, we're, like my rationale behind it was I didn't want to rely solely on us picking movies. And then I also didn't want to solely rely on random because there's some movies we were excited to talk about. Mm-hmm. So we're kind mm-hmm. of taking turns like one week, Courtney picks a movie and then we'll random and then I'll pick a movie that it's, it's random. That's um, good we're, yeah. um, we're watching this week. We're going to be recording for... The Wolf of Snow Hollow, which is one of Courtney's picks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Really great film. Definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it. It's on Shudder? Yeah. Yeah. I think it just I think it just came back to Shudder. Yeah. Cause it um it kind of makes the rounds, I've noticed on streaming services. <laughs> but really great low budget werewolf movie. Yeah. Um and we also uh 
when we talk about the movies, we'll give them like a full moon scale. Like instead of stars, we'll give them moons. I like that. I really do like that. (laughs) Thanks. If I had the mind to remember the actual phases of the moon, maybe I would actually call them like, uh, I'll give them and a waxing gibbous, but I don't even remember. I can't remember. Like, um, if I had to give this movie a moon scale rating, I would probably give it one and a half okay. or two. Moons. Yeah, <laughs> I think I would give it. A, I would give it two full moons based solely on the fact that I had a fantastic time watching it. Like I yeah. had a blast, and it was never slow. Mm-hmm. Like I wasn't yeah. bored because so much minutes. happens in a short. It's a tight ninety, mm-hmm. and yeah. it uses minutes. every minute of it. Yeah, and I also I stand by the principle that a low rated movie is still beloved and can still be one of my favorites, even if I think it's bad. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love mess. <laughs> I have a Blu-ray of The Room. I have Troll Two on DVD. <laughs> I have my friends watch them. We are we are fun over here. I have, <laughs> I have childhood memories of Troll Two. It's oh, so good. Yeah. Can I tell you guys something? I've still never seen Troll Two. Alyssa, you want to come over? <laughs> yeah, let me fly from Texas to Illinois real quick. Oh, I do actually want to go back to Chicago, though. I think about there's oh, this restaurant God. there so that makes their own pickles, and I still think about it. And it's been like four I live, years. I live within walking distance of a train station, too. Like, we could go to Chicago. <gasps> summer also trip. An airport in my town. Yeah. So make it a summer trip before I am forced to move out of this <laughs> apartment. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our podcast we do. And it's yeah. Been yeah I, and it's I, been fun to um, have ourselves, but also be really fun to have more guests on too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I've I've been listening, uh, you know, you guys are when the first episode came out. And yeah, oh, I've thanks. really, really enjoyed Thank it. Thank you. I oh, appreciate that. This um, has been a dream in the making for me for like four or five years. Yeah. I just, I didn't want to do it by myself. And I don't know how to do things. And I have severe anxiety. And one day I was just like, my friend Courtney that I've known since I was in high school. And we're both in grad school now. We've known each other since high school. (laughs) And I was like, she's into movies. She's smart. She knows how to do stuff. She'd be the perfect co-host. Yeah, she texted me. She's like, Courtney, do you want to do my podcast with me? And I was like, hell yeah. We'll do our podcast. I'll do your podcast with you. Yeah, I do all the editing and stuff. I have like... I don't have, I have a degree in like graphic design. So that comes with a lot of other techie stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've taken classes on sound editing and different things. So it's pretty fun and easy. Um, and I would love to like maybe do more podcasts later on. This is a fun like experiment kind of into yeah. doing something for fun on my own with Alyssa. Yeah. It's been going pretty good. Um, appreciate the listen. And I, we really appreciate too all the social media um, interaction. That's really helpful. Yeah. For us. So thank yeah. you very much for all that too. Yeah, this rough social media uh, time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to get better about like posting on the social media stuff because I forget because like I, I'm, I'm a teacher, so I'm busy every day, all day, and I'm in grad school. Mm-hmm. And so I sometimes I forget. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> um, hopes and dreams. <laughs> the tears of children. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> And you can find us on all the socials as well. I think you guys are at more werewolves. Oh, thanks for plugging us. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah duh. I'm stupid. Yeah, we're, at, you. we're on Twitter at more werewolves because someone has Silver Scream and Silver Scream Pod, and all it. And I'm gonna get it one day. I'm gonna get we're, it. We're working on it. They we're haven't posted in like eight years. Right. I'm gonna. gonna get Elon it. Musk, if you are listening. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, quit your job. <laughs> and we're, right. it's fun. we're also on Instagram at Silver Screen Pod. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so okay. the Instagram's right, but Twitter we're still working on getting go. that. I link we're, um yeah, I link us in our bio so we know like, to go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And we're at the Frankencast pretty much everywhere. Mostly Twitter and Instagram. Yep. We've tried all the new ones, but we've just kind of are sitting on those in case they become the thing. <laughs> right. Um, we all flock them. You're on there and want to talk to us there. Uh, I'll see the notification. So, um, and yeah, so you can also find us at patreoncom slash thefrankencast where we get a little bit more weird and experimental. And, really weird. Yeah. It's really so, fun. Yep. Uh, and we mentioned we're doing assignment terror next, next week. week. Yeah. Uh, cool. cool. 
So also known as Los Monstros del Terror or <laughs> Dracula versus Frankenstein. Love it. There's cool. a sequel to this, you said? Yeah. There's We're a whole series, Courtney. <laughs> We're going to watch all of them. <laughs> and as always, <laughs> to be continued. Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaking Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at The Freaking Cast or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Hold on one second, guys. Has Courtney frozen froze for everyone Am I else? Frozen? Oh yeah. Oh no, oh, no. Sweet, fr- sweet friend. No. <laughs> no, no. I was just thinking. She... I know she's really big into title sequences, so I thought she yes, probably she has something to say. What's she looks so cute. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I'm sure she knows, but I'm gonna tell her anyway. You frozen as hell, girl. At one point, someone's like, "Wait, is Courtney frozen?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> But your little frozen uh, frame was adorable. Uh, oh, thanks. I'm glad I froze not making like a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> uh, 